And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for a Lab of Legends legendary run with Aurelia. So we have our series going where for every single champion I'm going to have a run in legendary mode with each one for a little guide for y'all that are struggling with any specific champion. Um, so far um, we've done Malphite and Zillion. We're now doing Aurelia, then we'll have Fizz and Lissandra up after this and then i'm going to go back through and do all 10 of the original champions as well uh, but it really is one that, that can be a little easier um, and so this is one where if you want to challenge yourself um, you really can with the lab of legends it's nice because um, you know whenever you start you have your opening deck you get your passive powers and you have free rerolls on here but this is one where you can challenge yourself where if if you are doing too well with the Aurelia or you think it's a little easier, um, you know, feel free to like make it like where you can only reroll twice or three times, you know, like you can set some kind of bar for that. Or if you really want to make it go hard mode, try it without any rerolls whatsoever throughout the whole run. That's where it can be really difficult. But uh, for today, that's not what we're going to do. Uh, we rerolled to get the best starting power, in my opinion, for Aurelia, which is going to be Yip's Genius. And this is this makes it so whenever you summon a one cost unit, grant it plus two plus two, and so that's going to be giving your sparring student plus two plus two. But then also every time you blade dance and you put one ones into play, those are now going to be three three. So they will attack a lot harder and really help you uh, finish out games much faster. So this is going to be, so for those y'all that are kind of struggling on Aurelia, this is going to be the power that I recommend getting. There are a, a good amount of useful powers with Aurelia, but I think this is going to be the very best. So we're going to start there, and let's go through a run here on Legendary Mode. Okay, so we want, whenever you're mulliganing to start with, you want to see at the very beginning you want sparring student and you want aurelia those are really the only two that you want so there we go we got a sparring student and an aurelia perfect no reason to attack into the pesky specter whoa all right so they're going wide immediately so normally i would just save my two spell mana okay well that worked out perfectly. That was just like the best draw that we could have. Because now I still have one spell mana, right? Because you want to have a spell mana for Aurelia on round three. So we didn't have to like play Ribbon Dancer and not have any spell mana available. So that's good. <laughs> so you can tell, this is why these are the two cards you want. This is pretty silly. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know anything about the new icons for the Last Chance Gauntlet. I, maybe they did add them. I'm not sure. I don't know. Challenger. So that thing will be able to challenge the Aurelia. Ooh. Lead and follow. Alright, so we're taking two damage, not not too bad. Hey Wellington. Alright, so I'd normally play Aurelia right here, but I think I'm just gonna go with this blossoming blade, because it should just be Oh, that's not lethal. Oh, they just didn't block. All right, well, there we go. Offline climbing yesterday was was rough. I did make it. We are going to be in the seasonal tournament tomorrow. But it took a lot of hours <laughs> last night, more than I want to admit. <laughs> but so I'm pretty pretty exhausted today and I I'm real far behind on uploading YouTube videos and stuff now because all I did was play to get uh, qualified for the seasonal tournament last night. Um, so that's why we're just doing a quick stream here with an Aurelia run, and then uh, we'll have um, the seasonal tournament. I'll be streaming it live tomorrow. 
All right, we got two good options here. I like both Stygian and Onlooker and um, Legion Saboteur, right? We want one drops. Um, Nocturne, Katarina, those are both very useful. Um, so we got two useful champions here. I actually like Nocturne a little more. I feel like, Kater like Katarina is really good, but I feel like Katarina is pretty expensive. Like you have to spend the three mana first and then four mana for the rally. It's kind of expensive. I'm just going to go this route. I like healing my Nexus with Doom Beast. I think that's very useful. And Nocturne, pretty cool too. So I'm going to go with Nocturne. That's a good one. But with our, with our Yips Genius power... Definitely wanted a secondary champion that brought a one drop to the table. All right, got a one drop. We just want one drops and Aurelia. And no, we're not getting the Nightfall bonus or anything. But I wanted to just get it down right away. And now if I'm playing the Hapless Aristocrat, don't want to attack because then they would block with the Aristocrat and then the Bark Beast would be a 3-3. Unfortunately, they get to do that. Now Bark Beast is a 3-3. But it's me taking less damage. And killing this Mistraith. Maybe it's not even me taking less damage. Maybe that just wasn't a good play at all. I must become the leader they need. Hmm. What a good concussive palm draw. <laughs> that really helps. Stun that thing. Can block the Mist Wraith. Okay, that was a very good draw. Alright, so now the, the Nocturne and the Aurelia are going to work well together this round. So we'll turn on the Nightfall for the Nocturne. The Nocturne will give something vulnerable, and then the... I really will clean it up. And yeah, I'll trade Nocturne for Mist Wraith, I suppose. Yeah. Those are probably just going to be trading anyway. Alright, so that worked out well. It's ephemeral. I was hoping they were going to block. Turn aside. Okay, let's start with the duet. Should be able to finish this out this round. So we're at 19. There we go. So we're at 19 health going into the Thresh match. Um, I'm not sure exactly what I'm bringing tomorrow for the tournament. I, I don't think I'm bringing Sivir. I don't think I am, but possible. Ooh, okay, okay. I love minus one cost. <clears throat> So out of these, um, I wouldn't be using the plus two plus zero. I guess I guess well, Aurelia attacking for five is not bad, but I think I like a like Aurelia with Challenger is really nice because like with the quick attack Challenger you get to pick stuff off. I, I like that quite a bit, but I don't. I think you always get the minus one cost. Honestly, minus one cost um, makes just a big deal of you know when you get to play your cards and stuff like that. So I'm going to go with the Aurelia with minus one cost. Love playing cheaper cards. Um, this one's actually kind of tough. We're not taking Ruination, of course, but between Yasuo and Poro Cannon, you may think, well, you would just take Yasuo, right? Like, Yasuo is a champion, and, you know, it's it's a really good card and everything like that. But Poro Cannon, remember our power. 
our one drops get plus two plus two permanently so portal cannon can discard you know like a jewel protector or something expensive that we're not going to use and get two one mana three three elusives like that's that's honestly really good that's really good um so while it looks like we're supposed to just take Yasuo, I kind of want to take the Poro Cannon. Um, kind of want to take the Poro Cannon. That sounds it sounds weird to just pass up on Yasuo, but I think I'm gonna do that. All right, Pearl Cannon it is. Yeah, I mean, Yasuo is basically just a 4 being a 4-4 four, four quick attack for us. Which is good. Like, that's a good body. But we just need don't need to keep 4 mana cards. I do like keeping cards that make 1 drops, though. Because we also make, like, the Flawless Duets. We could discard if we want. We want one drops and Aurelia. Mm. Alright, am I discarding Concussive Palm or Lead and Follow? Like, 3 3 elusives are going to kill people pretty fast. And so the big thing about Aurelia costing two is now on round three. I can spend my two mana here, and round three I can still play Aurelia and the Flawless Duet. Both. We down to 13. This is perfectly fine. I guess I could block. I guess we do some blocking. Yeah, we can do some blocking. See, I didn't I didn't do great with the Silver deck yesterday as far as ranking up. That's like what I started with, and I started winning with it, but then I went on a losing streak with it. The So the Silver deck I played yesterday had Zoe in it. And the problem is, like, I want, I, I kind of feel like I want Zoe with, um, with Victor. And so that's, that's where my real problem comes into play. Alright, that'll do. 12, 12 elusive. <laughs> Alright, I think, I think Poro Cannon was the right choice. And so if I play Sivir, I have, to, I have to get a different combination with Sivir without Zoe. Alright, so let's see what our power is going to be. So we're going to have, when your hand is empty, draw a card. Not useful basically at all. I don't think I've ever chosen that. Sharing is caring. When you summon an ally, grant its keywords to all allies. That could be kind of useful with the Poro Cannons, but that's kind of about it. I mean, we got like Fearsome with Onlooker and Nocturne, um, but that's kind of about it. So that's not great. Round Start Frostbite, the strongest enemy. That's good if we wanted to play kind of a control route. None of these powers are spectacular. This could be our first reroll. But like this is, it's like Hold Them Off is useful. It's not like... If we want to save our rerolls, we can. That could be a useful power. It's not amazing. It's not perfect. It's not the best. But it's def like there. We could reroll and get worse powers than this. I want to reroll though, because we could get a lot better ones, also. Okay, so we got a better one. So spell slinger says our spells cost one less. I like that. Because um, that, that's going to mean our Flawless Duets cost zero. 
um and then just like some other like lead and follow costs one total mana right like that's i like that a lot like cost reduction always good so we're gonna choose spell slinger have our spells cost one less and none of these are useful at all okay so i'm gonna just take this lamb's respite we don't have anything that's ephemeral, do we? No. Not really. None of these are useful, but this is a bad spot to use a reroll. So basically right here, I would never recommend using your reroll um, for this just spell um, reinforcement because you're going to get bad spells. And so you could just really waste a lot of rerolls right here on the bad spells, and it's just not worth it. So we're just going to take a, a useless spell. I guess Lamb's Respite. And um, that's that's going to be a card that we'll just mulligan away. Hopefully we don't have it. If we do have it, we'll have our Poro Cannon discard it. So that's what it's going to be. It's going to be a discard card for Poro Cannon. All right, well, this is looking good. A couple of sparring students. So the Poro Cannons usually cost zero, now they... Look out for That's probably a bad attack with Omen Hawk, honestly. But now they cost one less, so we should be able to gain a mana whenever we play that. A chill in the air. That's how it should be, we should, we should just net a mana. All right, not the worst. I must become the leader they need. Fresh tracks. Can't afford to miss. That thing having a barrier. I'm just gonna just gonna go this route. A true Felgorian will. Yeah, could have gone singular will for the bots. That's true. to trade with the 3-1. Blossoming Blade, or I can Onlooker plus Nocturne. I guess I'm going to Onlooker plus Nocturne, I think. Fortunately, with all my things being so large, the Aurelia is just going to be the smallest thing that's getting the vulnerable all the time. Down to five, and we'll have our blossoming blade. Alright, champions are gone. But I'm pretty sure this open attack should be able to finish this out. So we're at 27 going into the second round for... There we go. Going into our second um, round for Freljord. Okay. 
Wow, we got some options here. We got some options. Like, Callista's not bad to have. Yeah, Callista's not bad to have. Just have a Callista. Um, these are all three very good. So River Shaper being a 4-4, very, very useful, right? Like Strike, Draw, Spell, our spells cost one less. Like, that's that's really useful. Um, yeah, that's that's a great card. You have Callista with the Attack Nab 1, which I don't necessarily love the Attack Nab 1, but, you know, we're just going to have, like, a bunch of cheap units and stuff. Things are going to die. Um, so Callista's very useful. But then Spirit's Refuge, right? Like, you having... Okay, with this... Uh, having ways to heal your Nexus with this, especially with how you have to, like, win three rounds in a row with just, like, the one Nexus uh, life total... Being able to heal your Nexus is very important. And this can get a lot of Nexus healing with, like, a big sparring student. But then also, when cast, you summon a random one-cost Poro. And remember, our one-cost our our one cost things get plus two, plus two. So you get... So this is four spell mana for a, th a three, three, plus... You get the barrier lifesteal. That's very useful. That's very useful also. So both the River Shaper and the Spirit's Refuge... Oh, and it's only three mana because our spells cost one less? Yeah, I kind of feel like I take the Spirit's Refuge, but all three of these are really good. I, I guess I'm taking the Spirit's Refuge. Because Nexus healing can be really, really important. Um, wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, I guess we'll go with the Tough Aurelia. But, I mean, I I'll, I love the um, Poro Cannon healing my Nexus. But we we just got Nexus healing, though. Um, so I think I, we'll go with the tough Aurelia. Tough's a nice keyword to have access to. Also with some of these where they're able to go wide with like little 1-1s and stuff. Okay, Nocturne gone, Spirit's Refuge gone. Even though I should, I don't know. Maybe we should be keeping the Spirit's Refuge. It's a good card to have later. I just don't really, didn't really want it in my opener. Okay, cool. We got it. All good. Um, I'd rather trade you with that card. I guess I don't really want to attack with the three threes as far as the duet goes. Maybe I just do this. We feast tonight, Mark. No, this barrier does not stop overwhelm. You cannot win. I guess with that thing being stunned, this would be a good time to attack with a couple of three threes. On the sparring student. Elixir of Iron. Avalanche. Okay. Just another winter. Another day, another fight. Destruction Alright, so we're gonna have one blocker. If I had one more mana, 
we'd be able to concuss upon them were made also. So I guess they go down to one. Just gotta figure out how to do one more point of damage. Shouldn't be too difficult to do one more point of damage. Alright, get that Nexus healing. So I had to have like Ice Shard <laughs> that would also kill them. Alright, back to 29. Thanks for the raid, Mounty. Alright, I'm I'm thinking our our deck's looking really good so far. Um wow. I really like the second two. So Steel Tempest, I don't care about. We're not choosing that. It's these other two that look great. So I, I'm a huge Siphoning Strike fan, especially in this mode, like where they don't have like a ton of interaction. I think Siphoning Strike is honestly really, really powerful. I take that a lot. Um, as you know, if you saw like the Zillion uh, run that we did, it was just basically just all Siphoning Strike all day. I think that's a very good card in this, this mode. And so it costs one less mana. And remember our power also costs another less mana. So it only costs three mana. So we'd have three mana Siphoning Strike. And I think that that, honestly, I think that sounds really good. However, this Vile Feast looks pretty good too. Because remember, this will be one cost, and it would get the 3 3 from the Spider and the 3 3 from the Poro. So you get multiple 3 3s plus drain something for one mana. I kind of feel like I have to take that. I want the Siphoning Strike, but I think that I have to take that, unfortunately. Okay. Now, um, obviously, we're not doing the Lamb's Respite. That card's useless. So Ribbon Dancer, kind of useless also. So we're looking at the Aurelia, plus four, plus four, but cost two more. I don't like it costing two more, but plus four, plus four is pretty sweet also, right? So it's gonna be, so it'd be a seven, six. There's kind of nothing wrong with a seven, six quick attack for four. So it basically costs one additional mana than what it normally is supposed to, and you get a seven, six Aurelia. I think I'm kind of in there. We got a lot of stuff to do early on with our other cards. I think I'm in there for a, a nice 7-6 for 4 mana. Sure. We'll do it. Yeah, so I just kind of feel like I have to take the file piece that gets me the two three threes. I think I have to go that, with that route, but man, I like Siphoning Strike. Yeah, so it really is just Malphite, <laughs> basically. Uh, let's see. Okay, so Doom Beast gets mulliganed. Lead and follow gets mulliganed. Like plus four, plus four is a lot. I don't know. I'm kind of scared of, like, honestly, for this start. I don't know. I don't have a way to kill the Weirding Stones right now. But we, we do have the 7-6 that we'll have the Spirit's Refuge for. That would be a good thing to Vile Feast. Where we're at, we're at four things that have attacked. 
Well, that's a good card. Let's start here. Kind of expecting um, Sejuani. No, they passed. Okay, there we go. I was waiting for them to frostbite Aurelia. That's what I was waiting for. So now we're going to lead and follow. Because I, I wanted to... I wanted them to frostbite before I attacked. Right? Because now we lead and follow. And then we can replay Aurelia. Man, having these, these duets all cost zero mana is really useful. Because you want the attack token, right? Because he... You have to have the attack token to get the flawless duet. They won't hurt you. If so we can they resummon. You, I'd never forgive myself. Flawless duet again. Leave no survivors. Alright, and then attack. And then attack. And we want to really on the right. And fight for, those who came before us. for the blade surge. With the 8 7 quick attack. Alright, so that will just be enough for lethal right there. And we are through Sejuani. Over to Piltover and Zon. Our deck's looking pretty broken right now. <laughs> looking pretty broken. Alright, start the game. Create four time bombs. Don't really need that. Triparian Might. When you summon a 5 plus power unit, it strikes the weakest enemy. I like that a lot. And when you cast a slow spell, cast it again on the same targets. I like that a lot also. Okay, we got a couple of good ones. So, the Trifarian Might would basically be for Aurelia and Nocturne whenever we play those two. So, basically Aurelia, then we just kill something. So, maybe that's not as good. Um, this one, when you cast a slow spell, cast it again, What, how that's going to really matter is these flawless duets. So basically every flawless duet gets doubled. Um, which that doesn't sound too bad. <laughs> that, but that's kind of all it does for a power. Uh, so do we want double, double flawless duet? Do we want the Trifarian Might that... You know, just kills the, the weakest enemy whenever you play Aurelia or Nocturne. Or do we want to re-roll? I guess we're just going to do double... Double Flawless Duet. We could, you know, we could have a better power here, but I'm going to save the re-rolls. The re-rolls are, are really useful. Let's save them. Alright, minus one cost. Let's go, minus one cost on the Aurelia. Go back to three mana like normal. Perfect. Love it. So now it really is back at three mana, but is just <laughs> just as a seven six. So we get to play it on round three and attack with it on round three. Then we'll have cheap flawless duets. Um, how? Do, so I guess this champion spell is a slow spell. So I guess we would you would double cast. How do, how does this work? Double casting. I have no idea how that works. Double casting. But anyway, let's replace all these. You think the second one fizzles? It's a possibility. I'll be interested to see what, what happens with that. We get a spire, spider and a poro. Spider and a Poro. Right, our deck's looking a little broken. Every blade, 
every beat in its place. So think about this. You want to find, you want to try to do really unfair stuff. All right, so we'll double cast the blade surge. Sure. Yeah, those aren't bad vial fees, right? One mana, get <laughs> two three threes into play, and drain one. So not quite leveled up early around one, you know, round three, almost ten out of twelve. <laughs> I'd say we're doing pretty good. Okay, I think I want. I just want to play this to get that attack in. Carry and some worker. They didn't kill the Destin Poros, that's good. Happy about that. What's today's Alright, double flawless duet. That should be leveled up Aurelia. Yeah, unfortunately, Destin, Destin Poro doesn't transform until round start. <laughs> okay. Yay, yeah, this is just pretty crazy. I kind of wish I would have saved mana so we could do this, so we could try out this uh, Vanguard's Edge and just give it a try. But obviously, my opponent's just very dead. Not gonna kill any of my stuff. Okay, so Foundry done. We got two more levels to go. They don't have much of a shot. Doesn't look like. Okay, so this is a good place to reroll. So we are only getting two more um, reinforcements, but like these powers can be like super, you know, super useful. As you can see, like all those cards we played that last game, these are f these are three cards that I just don't really care about. Don't really care about Nocturne or any of these. So let's get one of our rerolls in. Okay, so now we have some cards that I care about. I'm gonna go ahead and go with this lead and follow. When I'm when cast summon a random one cost Poro. Um, again, another way to get a Poro in play. But it's just kinda of, I lead and follow is really good with our cost reduction and it's a way to get more flawless duets. I want more flawless duets. So we're gonna go ahead and get that. <clears throat> so we can get a third copy of that card. Because with our flawless duets being zero mana and also being doubled, it's each flawless duet is attack for twelve, and get four out of, you know, four out of whatever for a really a level up. I want more copies of flawless duet. Okay, that puts a 3-1 into play. This is where it becomes challenging, you know, like round zero Von Yip, now round zero Heimer. Happy to do whatever's needed. This can be challenging. Arithmetics, thank you so much. Or Arithmetics, thank you so much for uh, the resub there. Six months. You are amazing. You are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Okay, 
Let's go with Ribbit Dancer or multiple three threes. I guess multiple three threes. Yeah, I'm just gonna get rid of Ribbit Dancer. I could get rid of Nocturne, but I decided I'll keep Nocturne. I don't know why they attack with the Heimer. So that's a lot of life. So finding the life steal barrier card would be really nice. Every blade, every feet in its place. I'm on it. That that'd be our best draw right now. Barrier life steal. <laughs> Arithmetic says you get more handsome every time I come in here, and then Cordex says I guess you should come here more often. Then. <laughs> yeah, I need some more help. <laughs> oh, I thought that was our lifesteal unit. I mean, I guess we get to cast this twice. Meh. Alright, so this will level up Aurelia. I kind of want to try this Vanguard's Edge and just see what happens. If we double cast it. Like what? Yeah, it'll be just kinda wanna see what happens. Okay, so it looks like it just gets you six six blades. Yeah, like it casts it twice, you just get six blades. Well that's pretty cool. They did put us down to 19. So they did get to do that. Get the most damage possible on them. Negative 24. Okay, it's victor time. Final, final boss. With Victor, we got 19 life. Overwhelm for Aurelia? Alright, I'm in there. Right? Yeah, that's gotta be the pick, right? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Could see reroll in that. Because I don't know if like that really makes too much of a difference. If it really has overwhelm or doesn't have overwhelm, right? Like I just don't know if that really makes any kind of difference, to be honest. Um, I could see keeping concussive palm. Like, the concussive palm would help against like the only ways that we lose against like a really big elusive or something. So we should probably keep it. Flesh is a weakness we must shed. Uh, Alright, I love the Spirit's Refuge. So Alright, so far so good. I guess I Poro Cannon, discard Poro Cannon. Yeah. So just an MK2.
and hoping Aurelia will win this game, because it should. Ugh! Really, we get that... <laughs> that Lanzarus fight that's useless? Right after I discarded? Why can't we flip those and I discard that thing? Okay, so doing pretty good. Put them from 35 down to 16 that round. Hoping that we can finish the job the following round. Cool. No attacks? <clears throat> Not gonna lie. Um... Lifesteal unit, kind of annoying. I can stun it, but then I don't get to Vanguard. If I'm just wondering, if I Vanguard... Okay, yes, I do get the Blade Surge. Okay, that's what I was wondering. I was like, do I get the Blade Surge? And that should be game. Can't imagine they went from here. It looks like we got <laughs> we got a legendary run completed with Aurelius. So you you can see just like when we've done this, just how powerful this Va this Von Yip's genius power is. And so if you want to go on Aurelia on the easy mode, if you're struggling all with it. This is the power to choose. Yip's genius. Because, yeah, we were doing some crazy stuff there. And you see how good cost reduction is, right? Like, a lot of those other things I was choosing was cost reduction, right? Having zero mana of those, of the uh, the flawless duets, great. Um, this isn't, like, cost reduction, but it, you know, gets you a free, free card with, like, having another um, flawless duet. Also great, so, right? Cost reduction was really important. We I did the minus two cost twice on the Aurelia. Of course, we did the plus two cost to give it plus four, plus four, so it even back out to three. But that cost reduction, very important. So um, always look for that. So there we go. So that should help you out if you're struggling at all with Aurelia. Uh, but it's, Aurelia is a fun champion to play in here because you get all the blade dances and everything. Whoa, we got a... Uh, Awesome. Love you, love chat. My favorite streamer. First time we got a donation. Let's let's uh, take a look at that. The the deck codes always kind of mess up the donation message on um, on the page. Let me let me go read that real quick. So that said, um, recent events. Okay, that was from Nasher. Thank you, Nasher. Love you, love chat, my favorite streamer, first time ever donating. Happy to show off some support. Love unedited videos, but opponents take 10 years. <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you, Nasher. That was very nice of you. Thank you. Okay, um, so there we go. So that's going to be Aurelia on Legendary Mode. And like I said, I'm going to be putting up a video for each one of the champions. We're going to have Fizz um, and Lissandra will be the next videos um and then we'll go back t to the original 10 but the lab of legends is just so much fun and they're, they're going to continue to add more to it and everything and i really hope y'all are enjoying the lab of legends and uh using it to be able to get those prismatics and stuff like that all right so that's going to be it here for this video those y'all watching later on youtube hit that like button over there and of course as always feel free to leave those comments as well hopefully y'all enjoyed it um yeah, I, I really appreciate those comments. Let me know how you're doing with Aurelia. Uh, if you're doing anything like, if you're doing no rerolls whatsoever and, and winning with that, I'd, I'd love to hear about it. You know, let me know like what kind of stipulations are you putting on your runs to make it more challenging as well. All right, but that's gonna be it here for the Aurelia legendary mode on the Lab of Legends. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.